So I'm gonna do a video on something that I've been wanting to do for a while, but I've been I've been, I've been putting it off. I've been putting it off. Wasn't really sure how I wanted to do it, but I figured I would just hop into it. So today I want to talk about some of the tools that you would that you would need if you wanted to get started in modding uh, the Stalker games or its many mods. I want to start this by saying that I am not the utmost expert on these tools. If you want to see the things that I've done with these tools, you can find me Krashnikov on ModDB. You can see the things I've done there. But I'm going to tell you how I use them, what I use them for, and we'll go from there. I also want to say that I think I got most of these tools uh, either from ModDB or from the Anomaly Discord server. Uh, if I if I can find the links, I'll put them in the description, but honestly, I've had these tools on my computer for so long that I don't entirely remember. So the first tool I'm going to look at is the AXR toolset. You can find this on ModDB. I pretty much only use this for unpacking files for Call of Chernobyl. So of course you'll double click the launcher. That'll come up and you'll get this window. Uh, don't ask me about all of these different things because I don't know. Truth be told, what I do know is the DB tool. You want to click on the DB tool. And now you've got an input path and an output path. So what I will do here is I will open up a Call of Chernobyl installation that I have here. And we're going to double click on database. Now in here you see you have conf config, maps, patch, resource, sound. For the sake of today's example, we're going to open the config uh, DB files. As you can see here, I already have the path, Stalker College Chernobyl, database, config. You'll see that matches here, College Chernobyl. Oh, actually, <laughs> now it matches. Ch Ch Chernobyl, database, config. Now the output path, this is where all the unpacked files are gonna go. So, now I gotta remind myself how to use this. It's been a while. All right, we got a different folder that we're gonna unpack to. This COC mods, test, new folder. COC mods, test, new folder. And now we'll hit execute. And boom. As you can see, the config files have been unpacked into this folder. If we pull up this thing here, it'll show. It is currently unpacking stuff. And as you see, the shader just popped up. This will do its thing. Unpacking finished. And there you go. You have all the config files here and ready to play with. Now, depending on what files you're going for, if you're going for, uh, let's get rid of that. If you're looking for files, say weapon, weapon configuration files, things like that, you're going to get it from these config files. But let's say you want to the sounds. Well, you'll do the same thing, but you'll do it with the sound, uh, folder sounds DB input. Oh, you'll put that in the input output here. We'll even do it there. Now we have the sounds. We'll pull up that, execute, and now it is unpacking the sounds. And unpacking finished. And now I can open up the sounds folder and we have all the sounds from Call of Chernobyl. So that is about it for AXR toolset. I know that there are other tools uh, in this toolset. I don't, I haven't figured them out yet. I believe there are other videos that talk about AXR toolset. So I'll encourage you to check those out, but for my purposes, this is what I use it for, is to unpack Call of Chernobyl files. So that's if I wanted to unpack Call of Chernobyl files, but what if I want to mod the original games? Well, from, from my knowledge, there are two, two extractor tools, one for Shadow of Chernobyl and one for Clear Sky and Call of Pripyat. For this example, we'll open up the Shadow of Chernobyl extractor, extractor.exe. And now, as you can see, kind of similar to the AXR tool set where you have a database, which is basically your input, and the output, which is where the files will go. This one, you can be a little more specific with the tool, with the files that you want to find. So if I open up the Shadow of Chernobyl file location, we have the file location for Shadow of Chernobyl. Now, if we want the files, we're going to go into... Shoot, where is it? Ah, right. There isn't a database folder for this. It's literally just the Shadow Chernobyl folder because what you're looking for are these DB files, game data DB files. So we'll copy that into here. Steam library, CMS common, Shadow Chernobyl. 
In the output path, we'll find something random. Here, we'll make a random folder. And we've got our output path. Once you have your database and your output path, you will click update. And now, as you can see, we have every single file that we could ever want in this list. And if we wanted to filter to find something specific, so if we say sound, 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 hit update again. And now you get everything related to sound. And if we want to extract something, let's say that we want, let's say we want this ambient rain sound, right? So we'll highlight it, click extract selected, and boom, there it is. There it is. Now, let's do the same with the clear sky slash color Pripyat extractor. It's more or less the same thing. It doesn't give you the uh, ability to select files. Uh, it says CSCOP and SOC WW and SOC RU. I haven't used this tool for Shadow of Chernobyl. I used the other one. If I remember correctly, this one didn't work properly for Shadow Chernobyl, but I, I, I'm not sure. Looking in the Color Pripyat folder, we can see that it doesn't have the game data DB files that Shadow Chernobyl had. And that's because it is in... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Resources. You have configs.db and resources.db. Okay, so yeah, these work a little bit different. You want to click on the little folder icon, find the file location, color Pripyat. Once we're in the color Pripyat folder, go to resources, configs.db, open. And now you can see configs.db, it is there. And then we need an output path. Once again, we'll make a random folder for example's sake. And we will copy and paste that into here. Now we click unpack. Unpacking, and as you can see, folders are appearing, and it will take its time to unpack all of those related files. Eventually, this really shouldn't take that long. So I think I don't believe this unpacker tells you when it's done. But as you can see, I've got the AI, anims, config, scripts, and spawns folders. If I open up the conf configs files, with all these files, so we're gonna assume it's done. A lot of stalker modding is trial and error. So you're gonna deal with it. You're gonna have things like this. Hit OK. And we'll close it. That's pretty much it for unpackers for Call of Chernobyl and the original games. Okay, we've looked at the unpackers. You've got you've got the files you need. Now you just need to know how to edit them properly. The, f the tool that you need all depends on what kind of file you're trying to edit. OGF is your 3D models. OMF files are your animation files. And SAVNT is used to edit audio files. So let's start with SAVNT because that's the simplest one to understand easy and easy enough, easiest to explain. We have the SAVNT.exe. And now we have this page. So before I get started explaining this, I'm gonna pull up some files to edit. So in fact, since we have already extracted the Shadow Chernobyl files, the sound files, we'll use that for the example. So select drive slash directory up here in the top left corner, and then we'll find that folder. Stalker SOC extractor tool, new folder, sounds, ambient, and there's that ring. Actually, fuck. Uh. Never mind that. We're gonna go to the Call of the Zone unpacked files that I already have. Unpacked files. Sounds. Uh, let's go to let's go to weapon weapon sounds because that's probably the sounds that you're going to be editing, or at least for mo most of the sounds that I've edited have been weapon sounds. Anyway, we'll open that up, and now you see we have all these OGG files. These are the sound sound files. All, at least as far as I know, all sound files in Stalker are .og files. So if we click on for example, ak74u underscore reload.org. We'll click on that. And then we have all this information on the right side of the screen. Understanding this information probably isn't too important. What is important is that the is these copy and paste buttons right here. Because if you 
edit a reload sound effect, for example, in Audacity and export it as an AUG, it will export without this information. So you open it up with the Sav-NT file, uh, Sav-NT tool, you would click on a reload sound effect that hasn't been edited, you copy the information, and then you would take it, and then you would click on the sound that you've edited, hit paste, hit apply, and then your sound effect has all the information that it needs to work in game as intended. This is important because if you try to add a sound effect without doing this, uh, it won't have any directional properties. It'll probably be, uh, it'll probably sound as though it's right next to you. Like it just, it won't have any of the information it needs to actually act like an, like a video game sound, basically. All right, you play around with Sav NT. You have your sound effects. You your sound effects have the appropriate properties. What's next? Well, we have two more tools that I want to look at: the OGF editor and the OMF editor. I use these for weapons and mutants. So mutant animations weapon animations those kinds of things this is gonna be these are gonna be a bit more of a pain to explain because I've only used them in uh, limited capacity I've only really used them for my mod pack that's based on old world no man's land you can find it on mod DB though I don't necessarily recommend it because it's really unstable but it was it was fun to make let's go into the o OGF editor as a start OGF tool.exe and now we have this screen. Now, obviously, we don't see anything yet. We're going to pull up a file. So we'll go file, load. So, again, color the zone stuff, for example's sake. Unpacked. We're going to meshes, dynamics, and we'll grab a weapon. Weapons, let's say the AK-74. All right. Now you have the AK-74 OGF, AK-74 HUD OGF, and AK-74 LOD OGF. The LOD OGF, I've never touched, and I'm not going to act like I know what you need to know for that. I haven't touched it. The AK-74 HUD OGF is what you see when you're holding the gun. So when you have a gun equipped, and it comes up, and you have it in your hands, and it's part of your HUD, you are seeing the AK-74 underscore HUD model. The AK-74 model is if you drop that gun on the ground, and you look at it on the ground, you are seeing that model. The HUD model has the necessary animations, so it'll be attached to an OMF file. So we'll grab the HUD OGF file and open. Now, as you can see, we'll start with the textures. So this is going to tell you what textures this, this model is going to call for. So as you can see, it has the weapon AK-74 textures, a texture for the underbarrel grenade, other textures so if you wanted to change what texture the model calls for you would rename it here to whatever that texture file is called typically if someone wants to replace or ch change rather a texture for a file there's a fucking ricer driving past my house thanks buddy what was he saying typically if someone wants to change a weapon texture they will grab the weapon texture from the unpacked files see what it's named and they will name their new file that that the name of the old file and that way they don't have to mess around with this this ogf stuff but if you're like me and you, for example there are two versions of the ak-74u in my no man's land mod pack and they both use different textures in order to do that i had to open up the ogf for one of them and assign it a different texture here so, I hope I explained that well. Probably not. Next, we'll go to motion refs. This is where it's asking where the uh, animation file is, the OMF file. So for this one, it's Dynamics Weapons, Weapon AK-74, Weapon AK-74 HUD animation. So as you can see, Weapon AK-74 HUD animation, Weapon AK-74 HUD animation dot OMF. That is the file that it is referencing. So. Obviously, it's the whole uh, file path that's there. So again, similar to the textures, if for some reason you needed to attach a different animation file to an OGF file, this is where you would do it. You would put the name in here, and it'll call on 
the appropriate OMF file. Probably didn't explain that well either, but I'm trying. That's enough for those GF files. Let's look at OMF files. So uh, OMF files, as I said earlier, are the animation files. So you have your OMF editor.exe. We'll open that up. We'll go to file, we'll go to load, and we'll pull up the AK74 HUD animation OMF. And I'll show you the animations. Meshes, dynamics, weapons, weapon AK74, weapon AK74 HUD animation. So I think, I believe, I hope, the weapon hand AK74 HUD animations, I believe, yes, these are the actual animations that you'll see in the config files for each weapon. Another topic for another day. But as you can see, AK-74 draw, AK-74 holster, AK-74 idle, AK-74 shoot. These are your weapon animations when you use it. So when you hit the right click button to aim, it activates the idle aim animation. Pretty simple to understand, right? And in here you can rename them if need be. You can add other animations into an OMF file. So if we looked at Old World for an example, in order, to, if you wanted to get some of the uh, weapons from Anomaly to work in Old World, you would have to take the OMF files that have been edited by Old World from or the original Anomaly files, take those animations from those OMF files and put them in the edited Old World files because the Old World OMFs have removed uh, all the unnecessary animations that it doesn't use. I probably didn't explain very <laughs> explain this stuff very well, but I hope it helps somebody. If this was any help, I'm, I'm glad. Otherwise, I tried.